This remote island may be the home to a mysterious beast. They were a very fierce animal. A top-of-the-line predator, thought to be extinct for more than 70 years. It's just going to go straight for the kill on the throat. Yeah. This creature was a killing machine. They tended to bite off the nose or even decapitate a whole animal. There's lots of things happen out there that you can't easily explain. A mystery that could be solved with modern forensic science. Should this hair prove to be thylacine hair, it would be evidence of the animal. Now Monster Quest travels to the rainforests of Tasmania to capture proof that this elusive creature still lives. Hey, did you hear it? Yeah. Let's go. Witnesses around the world report seeing monsters. Are they real or imaginary? Science searches for answers on Monster Quest. The island of Tasmania sits at the bottom of the world. 150 miles southeast of the Australian mainland, this is the land that time forgot. Roughly the size of South Carolina, it is home to pristine rainforests, unique fauna, and some of the world's tallest trees. Wildlife like the Tasmanian devil, wombat, and kangaroo thrive on this green land. But there is said to be something else stalking this 26,000 square mile island, a mysterious predator. You feel that there's eyes upon you, you feel like something's watching you, and you can't work it out what. For a minute it didn't register, and then I thought, it's a Tasmanian tiger. I looked for him for at least three minutes. It's not dead, it's not gone, and we saw it. Eyewitnesses report seeing a wolf-like creature with distinctive dark brown stripes and a large head. The beast has a jaw that is able to open wider than any known mammal, and long razor-sharp teeth capable of slicing through flesh. This beast measures up to six feet long and can weigh as much as 80 pounds. The descriptions match those of the Tasmanian tiger, known for its distinct tiger-like markings. Known to scientists as the thylacine, this large carnivorous marsupial was the island's top predator until the turn of the 20th century when they were hunted to extinction. But some people are now convinced that this was not the end of the tigers. It was absolute um, disbelief to see it. Andrew Orchard, a farmer, encountered a tiger on a deserted road in northeast Tasmania. I just happened to notice on the right hand side of the road, standing in the ferns, only a hundred metres up in front, what I thought was a forester kangaroo because it had an enormous head on it. And for a minute it didn't register and then I thought, it's a Tasmanian tiger. As Andrew slowed down, the creature was less than 30 yards away. As I nearly got to it, all of a sudden it got down on all fours and paced like a horse and then got to the other side and went up the bank. Andrew swiftly turned around, rushed out of his car and tried to locate the fleeing beast. Um, in the ferns, you know, they're waist high and this animal's probably only just above the knee. It's near impossible to find it. But it was a very good view of it in the afternoon. There's no doubt what it was. Since 1936, there have been more than 350 reported sightings across the island. The witnesses all seem to describe the unique features of the Tasmanian tiger. The jaw gape was enormous, much larger than a wolf, and they could open their mouth that wide. Wildlife biologist Nick Mooney says the beast relied on an acute sense of smell and great stamina to tenaciously track and kill its prey. You have a very large crushing bite. This is very clearly a flesh-eating jaw. Mooney has investigated many of these alleged sightings. He's seen no evidence so far that's led him to believe the beast still roams the island. I've been doing this work and other 
wildlife research for long enough to know there's lots of things happen out there that you can't easily explain or see and you can be wrong. Lacking physical evidence of the Tasmanian tiger's survival, Mooney is left with only eyewitness descriptions to inform his investigations. Sometimes it's somebody reporting um, a vocalisation, a, a call, they are sure as thylacine, or smelling a smell, or maybe a footprint, but mostly it's about people's eyewitness accounts. These are notoriously hard to decide which is true and which is false. People's ability to um, modify their memory is notorious and it, it's uh, the plague of courts all around the, the world. The Monster Quest expedition team has travelled to Tasmania to search for evidence that the tiger still exists. Chris Reberg, a local researcher convinced of the tiger's survival, will lead the search. Joining him is veterinarian Michael Nelson. We do have high hopes. We've put a lot of time into planning the choice of our location. Previous expeditions that have searched for the tiger have focused on where most of the sightings occurred. These were mostly near the inhabited and farmed area of the island. Instead, the expedition team has chosen the remote and inaccessible southwest corner of Tasmania as its focus. A reason that humans hunting these creatures would have conditioned the tigers to avoid people. At this point in time, it's time to go back to the earlier sightings, which are from the southwest, because that region has really been untouched since 1936. Get all this gear in. There are quite a few dangers involved in this, ex this expedition and the, the most notable one would be the snakes. We're dealing with tiger snakes and copperheads for the most part. We've also had to take into account the changing Tasmanian weather conditions. In Tasmania you can literally have four seasons in a day. You can be out in brilliant sunshine, the clouds will roll in, it will start hailing, even start snowing. Yeah, we're using the top pouches for first aid and emergency, so that's enough. Yeah. These weather conditions are also highly unpredictable and the team will need to be well prepared. Now for us that's extended because not only do we need all of the normal hiking gear, we also need to carry some fairly high-tech camera equipment. There's no point in being there if we've got no way of capturing the animal on film. Right. A long last. Might Thank be you. the last time we see this car for a while. Okay. We're gonna head yeah. down. Basically down. Yep. And then skirt around I think. There we go. The fact remains there are some really credible sightings before the tiger went extinct from that region. It was definitely there and it was definitely breeding in sufficient numbers. The team has collected the details of dozens of recent sightings and has identified some promising search locations. We've got 60, 70 sightings on there and plotted all of those and looked at how they compare to where we're heading into the bush today too. To maximize the chances of capturing the elusive beast on camera, Reberg's team set up motion sensing camera traps in the most remote reaches of the wilderness. Let's have a look around here. The team has found the perfect location to deploy this technology. The Tassie Tiger would love to move along the edge of this plane through this scrub. And then when the uh, paddy melons and the smaller prey species come out into the open at night, it'll duck out from there. Paddy melons are small kangaroo-like animals that are native to the area. The stories we have of Tasmanian tigers eating prey is that they were a particular eater. Um, they would often eat at the neck of an animal and uh, eat the blood vessels through there. To capitalize on the highly predatory nature of the tigers, right. the team will install a robotic decoy. I think it looks good. So what we've set up there is a, um, a lure which moves sets off a call every three hours right in front of the camera and uh, hopefully that'll attract the interest of the the tiger yeah that's good it's giving that little bit of a wobble at the top of the branches here which you can see from a fair way back this decoy will emit the distressed wail of an injured animal and like most predators the tasmanian tiger is not likely to pass up an easy meal uh, we'll be laying down some scent around this area as well, so being a predator, it's going to use its nose to hunt. It'll come in this area and that's all we really need is for it to be there in front of the camera, trigger it and get that photograph. 
At night time we're actually carrying spotlights as well, so we'll be trying to camp in areas which are close to open plains so that we can sweep a whole broad plain in, in the one go. They will also be constantly filming the expedition, hoping to capture a quick glimpse of the tiger. There will be a camera mounted to my pack which will be running non-stop as we're hiking. A lot of people who have sightings of Tasmanian tigers are for fleeting, three seconds, five seconds, and you don't want to be sitting there trying to get something out of your pack to record that. The team will also be looking for physical evidence, like scat and hair. I wonder if this log here could have been a den at some stage. Oh, Looks like it's hollow up the middle. Let me check out the other end, it seems a bit bigger up there. Yep. Yeah, this is better. But... Uh, it'd still be a bit small though. Yeah. Um, and certainly that'd be more run down. That's just rotted, that's all that is. The soft mud of the riverbank is ideal for preserving animal tracks. There's a spot up here where an animal could have come down through the bush to access the water to drink. Can you see anything there? It's been raining, so that one there could easily have been a print at some stage, but it's just... Uh... It's washed away to nothing, there's no detail there at all. Oh, well, we've got to go across. <laughs> yep. Come in and have a look. Some prints there, yeah, for sure. It's like claw marks in through there. Monster Quest is searching one of the world's most remote islands, Tasmania, looking for a predator that's thought to have been extinct for almost 100 years. The Tasmanian tiger was the apex predator on this island for centuries. Well, the Tasmanian tiger's been here for many thousands of years. Catherine Medlock is a curator at the Tasmanian Museum in the state capital of Hobart. According to historical accounts, some native tribes of Tasmania revered the species and were hesitant to hunt it. The Aboriginal people of Tasmania had their own names for it as well. Uh, some of those names are Kanuna, Corinna. This legendary creature made a strong impression on Western colonists, who were also terrified of this beast. When Europeans first arrived here in Tasmania to settle, there were tales of a large dog-like carnivore, the meat-eating mammal that lived in the bush. Here yeah, they called it a Tasmanian wolf, Tasmanian hyena. Farmers lost countless sheep to this monster during the harsh years of colonization. As mutilated corpses of livestock were discovered, fear quickly took hold. Rumors spread that the tiger possessed vampire-like tendencies, escalating the hysteria. People claimed that the thylacine, when it killed its prey, that it would suck the blood from it. In 1888, under pressure from farmers, the government placed a bounty on the tigers. There was a price of one pound on the head of the tiger, and one pound was a lot of money in 1900. One pound was the equivalent of $730 today, and this generous reward led to the capture and death of some 2,000 tigers. Finally, in 1930, Wilfred Batty shot and killed the last known tiger in the wild. By 1936, the last living specimen in captivity was recorded on film at the Hobart Zoo. It died on September 7th of that year. But many believe that this beast lived on in hiding. In 1946, naturalist David Fleay launched a four-month expedition in the southwest region of the island to locate and capture a new specimen. He spent a considerable amount of time in that area, which was considered to be where tigers still would be. Fleay and his team laid snares, created scent trails, and brought in live animals as lures. He soon found a set of tracks running for about 330 feet he believed they were unmistakably that of a Tasmanian tiger. They laid more traps and finally found signs of a struggle. 
there was a trap out in the bush and that a tiger had been in the trap and then had escaped. Um, so some little hair samples were collected from that trap. Flier brought the hair samples back to the Hobart Museum where they were catalogued and finally forgotten. Until 2008, when Catherine Medlock discovered a set of old envelopes. One envelope said, hair from Mrs. Flay, 1946, and I thought, bingo, there it is. Now, the Monster Quest science team will test the samples to see if the tiger did indeed outlive its supposed demise. Medlock has selected seven of the hairs for analysis and has taken them to the University of Adelaide in Australia. There she will meet with a hair identification expert. These are the hairs, Georgiana. Um, I guess one of the first things we'll look at is just the gross morphology of the hair. To establish a reference, the zoologist puts a known Tasmanian tiger's hair under the microscope. This is a hair from another animal that's yeah, from this, a museum specimen. Yeah, the Tasmanian tigers have a wide medulla lattice and that mm -hmm. tends to continue all the way down the hair. Hair is usually composed of three layers. The medulla is the central part of the hair shaft. The scientists note the composition and then proceed to compare the samples to those of native Tasmanian species. Finally, they test the flea samples. Okay, so let's look at our mystery sample. Um, Should this hair prove to be thylacine hair, it would be evidence of the animal post-1936. The Monster Quest expedition team is approaching the location where David Flea collected his samples. There were a number of sightings in the 1930s and then the next major expedition was in 46 with David Flay. And there's been very few expeditions in that region since. Oh, this way. The team believes that if the Tasmanian tigers survived the hunting, it would have become increasingly solitary. With that sort of hunting pressure, we've artificially selected for the animals to survive those that basically um, avoid human presence. What did you see, Michael? I think it was a paddy melon. Yeah. Tucked in under this pile of scrub here. Southwest Tasmania is a wild territory that harbors a rich variety of wildlife. You see where I mean? Just before oh, yeah. the eyes. And a number of poisonous predators. A bite from a snake, if you get bitten two or three days away from the nearest medical facility, especially if it's in poor weather and you can't get a helicopter in to get you out, you're in real trouble. All right, we've got one up here. It's a snake on the side of the track. There, oh, he, goes. there he goes off into the bush. Oh. Have a look where he went. Tasmania has three species of poisonous snakes. The tiger, copperhead, and white lip. Within the space of maybe half an hour, you, your breathing is in real trouble and uh, you could die very quickly without treatment. He went just down through the holes down there. Well, most likely a tiger snake. He must have felt our vibrations as we've come along. The thing is, we've still got to go through this clearing. It's about where we're going in. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's full of snake habitat and a bit dangerous for us. The team notices something in the bush. Some prints there, yeah, for sure. Claw marks in through there. And here, moving through, you yeah. can see it. We might keep heading up there and see what else we've got. In Tasmania, Few animal footprints are as large as the tigers. Does it continue on up there? Can't see anything through here. Looks like the ground dries out a bit more up there. Well, the creek goes through, but not the footprints. The two footprints are photographed and measured. The team will analyze them further to determine if they are evidence 
of the elusive tiger. We won't be able to know for certain what we've got until we can take them back, put them on a computer screen and compare them side by side. Monster Quest is on the island of Tasmania, 150 miles off Australia's Pacific coast. Chris Reberg is leading an expedition in search of the Tasmanian tiger. It was the largest predator to have roamed this area and has been presumed extinct for decades. Around 80 years ago, they could be found anywhere around here. Paul Bailey, an experienced tracker, is determined to prove that the Tasmanian tiger still lives. Hola. Tree ferns make an excellent hiding place because of the, all the dead foliage. This is the forest of the Upper Florentine Valley in Tasmania, and this is the area where the last tiger was caught in 1933. And this is also the area where Bailey says he crossed the path of the tiger. He will have his eyes on you, but you'll never see him. This has always been the way with the tiger. I was 15 miles from here in the southwest. Early one morning when I smelt what was unmistakable as the tiger's smell. It had a very unmistakable, strong, pungent odour. It's a, a strange feeling. There's nothing making any noise in the bush. It's deadly, deadly quiet. But you feel that there's eyes upon you. You feel like something's watching you. And you can't work it out what. People believe the Tasmanian tigers were nocturnal hunters that retreated into their dens during the day. And so I searched the area for the animal for about an hour and the smell wafted away, disappeared in the air. I knew then that whatever made that smell had gone. Carl Bailey has been collecting evidence of Tasmanian tigers for 40 years, and he is starting to detect a pattern. When the tiger killed an animal, it always brought it down from the neck and the head. And it has been known to eat the nasal areas, eat around the nasal areas. These photographs of dead sheep show the tiger's supposed killing method. Some said it was a dog, but when a dog kills a sheep, it's messy. There's fur everywhere and blood everywhere. But when a tiger would kill a sheep, it would be a very neat kill. Bailey also believes he has photographic evidence of the tiger's survival. This photo here particularly was taken by a German tourist Klaus Emmerichs in 2005 when he came to Tasmania to do some bushwalking and by chance uh, happened to snap this animal uh, in the northwest of the state. The publication of this photo caused a huge sensation. Nick Mooney, a wildlife biologist, remains unconvinced. The historical records show a complete collapse in the Tasmanian tiger population after the bounty was placed on their heads. No more were caught through the 1930s, the years of the, of the Depression, the Great Depression, when people went back to the bush. There were millions of snares set in all the old places that caught Tasmanian tigers and nobody caught one. So that's a, like a huge search was carried out and nobody found any. But there have been more than 350 reports recorded since that time. You never forget the sighting of an animal that is supposed to be extinct. Buck Emberg and his wife Joan were coming home one night when they came across an extraordinary sight. It had just rained not too long before that, so everything was shiny. And we came not too far from where we lived. We came around a corner and there it was. I had a jam on the brakes hard, and I didn't quite know what to do. There were two animals. It was obvious that they were two thylacines, or Tasmanian tigers. 
The mother, followed closely by her baby, crossed the road in the headlights of their car and then quickly vanished into the darkness. So Joan and I stopped for 15, 20 seconds, burning in our mind what we saw. I said, okay, what did you see? She said, I saw two thylacines. There can be no question. It could be nothing else. The Monster Quest expedition team is now deep in the midst of the Tasmanian rainforest. Hey, wait. Did you hear that? Just listen. Listen. No recording of a Tasmanian tiger vocalization exists. Witness reports suggest they emit whistles and whines, and others say growls and hisses. The most common description is a yapping described as similar to a terrier. The Tasmanian tiger was reported to have a kind of a yip 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 sound or a yap 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 kind of sound. What do you reckon? It sounded like it was coming from just over there. I can't see, see anything. See this way? Over there. Keep going up there, we'll see what we find. The animal calls lead the expedition team to believe they are getting closer to finding evidence, and they prepare for a nocturnal observation, hoping to catch the tiger hunting. They plan to survey another site where the robotic hunting lure is set up. Just need to check this audio lure. Yep, that sounds good. Yep, it's back up. The team camouflages itself to observe the location. It's a very windy, rainy night. It's very hard to distinguish what's what. Nelson shifts to the thermal vision camera to pick up heat signatures. Heat coming off something over there. Monster Quest is searching a remote Australian island for evidence of a terrifying beast thought to be long extinct. 750 miles north in Sydney, Australia, a renowned paleontologist believes that through cloning he can bring the fabled creature back from extinction. Of course, Tasmanians, and for that matter, the rest of the world, are reluctant to let go of a creature that had slipped so gracelessly into mythology, vanished off the face of the planet. Professor Michael Archer thinks humans are responsible for the tiger's extinction. In a sense, whether we shot it to death or we simply crowded it out of Tasmania or a combination of all of those things, this is something we did. And hence, I feel we have a moral obligation to think about is there a possibility that we could undo this horrific ecological disaster? He's eager to right the wrong. One of the important tools that may take us from now and into the future and create a miracle is a molecule called DNA. In 1999, Archer joined a team of genetic experts in an attempt to clone the tiger. The raw material was found in 100-year-old tiger embryos. And when you go down into the bowels of the museums, it's a, it's a mystical experience to sort of turn on the lights and see all these little faces staring at you out of the jars with their hands pressed up against the jars. If there's anything going on in their brains, it's probably, I'm not quite dead yet. You know, you might get me back. Archer and his team carefully extracted DNA from the preserved embryos. When we pulled some of that out and began to sequence it, it was clear we had thylacine DNA. It was in this animal. But there was a problem. 
The DNA was incomplete and fragmented. The team needed to fill in the gaps, so they turned to the the Tasmanian Devil. We're interested in the differences between the Tasmanian Devil's DNA and the thylacine. And you can quantify those and be very precise about what those differences are through the mapping of the DNA. And then you can go in and switch them. Technology enables us to do that. They believe that completing the entire tiger's genetic sequence will eventually lead to the birth of a living animal. And at that point, it must be a thylacine that comes out the end of the Tasmanian Devil. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to announce what is probably the biological equivalent of human beings taking the first step on the moon. No is there any possibility that in this pickled pup, could that be the key? Is, is that the, the, the time traveler, if you like, from the 1800s carrying this menu, this message in its DNA, that could enable us with the right technology to read that menu and bring that creature back to life, put thylacines back on the planet. Archer's ultimate hope is to reintroduce the tiger to Tasmania and create a real Jurassic Park. My only thought is not if, the if part I'm convinced about, it's the when. And the when keeps happening faster than people tend to make predictions about it. So I'm very, very hopeful that in my lifetime, I'm going to be patting a thylacine. On the island itself, people keep seeing this supposedly extinct creature. Now this is a sort of country which is very similar to the spot where I saw my thylacine at the time. Mm. On a rainy night, while on duty for the Tasmania National Parks, wildlife biologist Hans Narding came face to face with a creature from the past. By the middle of the night, about after two o'clock around that time, um, I woke up. And as I so often used to do, I uh, wanted to have a look around if there was any wildlife around. Got the spotlight out and swung my arm around. Behold, it came to rest on a thylacine. For three minutes, Narding carefully observed the animal standing 20 feet in front of him. So I could measure it and weigh it and uh, I count the stripes. At one stage he turned his head slightly and um, dropped his lower jaw. The biologist decided to take a photo of the animal. In that fleeting moment, the tiger raced off into the bush. Narding leapt from his car in pursuit of the creature, but it had disappeared into the night. I was absolutely sure what I was looking at, that it was indeed a Tasmanian tiger. The expedition team is scouting their second target location when they capture a heat signature on a thermal imaging camera. Well, what's that? Let's go and check it out. They are closing in on what appears to be the perfect tiger prey. Yeah, very obvious. Big signature. The paddy melon, a small kangaroo-like animal. No, scan further along. Oh, that wind's no. cold. No go. I just think it was far too windy, too cold, and the animals haven't come out to that side of the mountain. Normally, the area would be busy with wildlife. Because the thylacine is a hunter and it hunts paddy melons and opossums and so forth, um, if those animals aren't around, then we can't expect to see the tiger around either.
daybreak. The team embarks on the final day of their journey. The more of the climbing we get out of the way earlier in the day, the better. Yep. They have reached the high plains and uncovered signs that the creature may be close by. Oh, Michael, can you smell that? Yeah. Oh, that is foul. Oh, that's foul. You know, they do say sometimes people who see tigers do get a foul smell. Why don't we head down there? Coming from down this way. Just listen for a sec. It would have had to be something down in there. It's just a really foul smell, though. It smelled really like a dead animal carcass or something like that. But can you see? It looks like there are game trails through that bush. Yeah, we should definitely go down there and check it out. Come on, the morning feeders. The pungent scent of the tiger is said to smell like rotten meat. But as the smell disappears, the trail goes cold. You seen these, Michael? The team is hiking in to retrieve the images from the motion sensing cameras that have been in place for four weeks. Reberg and Nelson will discover if the operation has been a success. Doesn't look like it's moved since we put it up. It's a good sign. It's, good. it's gone through four, nine photos. So we've got nine photos here. Okay. We'll take this one with us because we've only got a few hundred yards or half a K or so. Pick up the second and then we can check them both. How about that? Yep. So the, the camera we've got up here is on a game trail. Um, both the, the prey and hopefully the predators come through there every night to come out onto the plains. Let's see what we've got on this one. 27 shots. Yeah, nine events, 27 images. I'm pretty happy that it's come up with the 27 shots. We've got the laptop over there. I think uh, we'll pull it down yeah, and uh, let's have a look get it going. And now it looks as if one of these shots may reveal long-awaited evidence of the beast. Got an animal just here. Got the back of something there. What's that? Monster Quest is searching the wilderness of Tasmania for a predator thought to be extinct for more than 70 years. This woman is investigating suspected modern-day tiger hares. This biologist says he observed the beast for more than three minutes. These explorers have found evidence that may prove the tiger stalks this island. And this man has been investigating sightings of the beast for over three decades. Buck Emberg. Hello, Buck Emberg. It's Nick Mooney here. How are you? Nick Mooney is meeting with Joan and Buck Emberg to discuss their sighting and to examine the photographic evidence of the tiger. There are many people such as Buck Emberg who I've known for a long time. In dealing with those people you don't know so well, you are simply forced to look for some measure of credibility. I do. Well, I'm not saying anything you don't know, but this area here that in the northeast has been pretty well free filled. And, and you go this through is there. where most of the sightings that we know about right. come from. Buck, if you've got the animal here, you can't just have five or ten individuals Correct. That, uh, because you have to have a bizarre list of adaptations to let five or ten individuals survive this long. Something I often do is reconstruct reports. I won't do it on the spot to embarrass the person perhaps but I'll often go back and measure the distances, measure the times, maybe take a dog back, make the dog do what somebody said the Tasmanian tiger did and time them. This is the um, uh, Emirate the photograph taken by the German tourists. Um, well, as I, can, I, can, probably seen. I can produce a tiger out of that, but yes. I can't say that it's a tiger. Well, that's all we've got. You know, it's a sort of blurry image you might well expect from a field photograph. Correct. We've all taken blurry, blurry image. So from that point of view, it's kind of realistic. The thing that uh, worried us a lot was the remarkable similarity with this photo from a German book. Mm. and uh, the posture of the animal, the angle, the proportions, oh, uh, even the stripes are almost identical. Uh, and this animal is uh, holding its head up doing a, a gape, you know, a low stress gape. Yeah. This animal is doing exactly the same. The position of the body makes Mooney skeptical of the authenticity of the picture. The science team will need to evaluate the image to be sure. The coincidence uh, makes me a bit uneasy, I'll have to say. I would be uneasy with that mm. if I'd found that out, yeah.
The science team is completing the morphological examination of suspected Tasmanian tiger hairs. Let's just have a look at the photo that we took of our, th our Tasmanian tiger yes. specimen. Okay, so let's look at our mystery sample. Um, so if we start at the tip and work our way down and have a really good look at the whole hair, uh, we can see that there isn't a medulla anywhere. That's it. strange. Yeah, there are a handful of Australian animals that don't really have much of a medulla. Put them side by side and have a look. You can see that they don't really look anything alike. They're quite different, aren't they? So this is the flay hair and this is known thylacine hair. Yeah, um, these were taken with the same magnification. I mean, having said that, the, the sample may have come from a particular part of the body that we haven't got a reference yes. specimen for. It's it was looking like wombat, but they're still not 100% sure. With the number of hairs that you've got yes, here, that would, would have that. that's the best. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, there's something, yeah, something just here in the corner of the shot. The expedition team is downloading the images from the field cameras. They see a brush-tailed possum in one photo. And then, something mysterious. Just got the back of something there. Look, what's that? It's got an almost stripy look to it, isn't it? You would hope to see some striping about here, if that yeah. were a tiger. Yeah. Just can't tell from that photo what it is. Yeah. There somewhere. The image is not clear enough to be definitive. Right up close to the camera. But they have other compelling evidence that might prove the tiger still exists. Earlier in the expedition, the team found footprints in soft, muddy ground that resembled the prints of a Tasmanian tiger. Reberg and Nelson now examine the footprints in detail and compare them with historical examples of known thylacine prints. What surprises me is the toe spread on this is actually yeah. a lot wider than, than what I was expecting. And the plantar pad is just, like the, the width and the height proportions is the same as what we've got in this illustration. That is very, very similar. It is. When I first saw that print and compared it alongside the thylacine print, I'd have to admit I was pretty excited. Yeah, so, <laughs> what are you saying? Yeah. The dimensions are right, the width's right, the length's right, the layout of the digits is right. What I can say definitely about this print is that the information that's there is consistent with a Tasmanian tiger. Because that's looking really, really positive at the moment. So we'll be got... showing this to a few people. Yeah, that is <laughs> incredibly close. It's well worth asking questions. Yeah. And I'm, it's just, you know, I'm blown away, I'm speechless. <laughs> it's fantastic. Woohoo! <laughs> okay. This is a stunning discovery. It could be physical proof of the existence of this creature. This month's to Quest expedition has uncovered solid indications that the Tasmanian tiger may still be living in remote reaches of Tasmania. Consistent and credible eyewitness reports have been catalogued that match historical descriptions of the creature. The team may have captured the first photographic proof of the Tasmanian tiger in decades, and they will continue surveillance of this exact location in order to capture more images. Although microscopic examination of the flea hair is inconclusive, the footprint found in the bush is a convincing piece of physical evidence. It will need further analysis, but it's a compelling indication that the extinct marsupial, thylacine, may still be alive. I believe they're there because of what I've seen and heard and the hundreds of eyewitnesses that have seen it too that have told me about what they've seen. You can't believe them all, but a few of them must be true. I do not think the animal is there. I know the animal is there. The fact that I could not find them means nothing. Uh, somebody else might. They have to be an extraordinary run of coincidences to be still there. It would be fantastic. Um, and I, I hope it happens. Thank you for watching The Amazing TV.
Don't forget to subscribe.